James Kaufman, World News Report today, August 3rd, 2025. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after weeks of no solar activity, besides one filament eruption, we've had an M-class solar flare. This time it was an M. 2.95 solar flare and it was directly earth facing it was a short term flare that peaked at 1357 utc time or right before 7 this morning central time here in the u.s this solar flare was central disk right in the middle of the sun directly earth facing generated by a sunspot group 4168, which is now a beta gamma sunspot group. We have two semi complex sunspot groups on our sun all of a sudden after having only simple sunspot groups for, well, several weeks. Now, I personally believe that this is the start to a lot more solar activity. We now have two beta gamma sunspot groups on our earth facing solar disk and we have well several planetary connections or geomagnetic connections to other planets in our solar system so again this peaked at 1357 the solar flare only lasted 11 minutes it's right here came in at an m 2.95 Today, we only have a 5% chance of having an X flare, a 35% chance of having an M flare, although that ship has sailed, and a 95% chance of having a C flare. It looks like we've maintained or regained our C baseline at this point. Taking a look at HMI Intensogram, looks like we have eight sunspots earth facing on our solar disk here well we have at least four of them trying to go around the far limb although that is where our geomagnetic connection is to the sun if something were to happen on that far limb it could be geoeffective towards earth but these are simple sunspots as you can see they're green we have had two simple sunspots morph into beta gamma sunspots overnight 4167 we see towards the departing limb and then we have 4168 responsible for this m-class solar flare it's really more in this area here now i would say directly earth facing it did look like it lifted a coronal mass ejection off the surface of the sun and i would expect to see that in about 40 hours over to our noon GOES-19 Solar Ultraviolet Imager, 195 angstroms, can easily see that solar flare pop off. And I would say that that's pretty much directly Earth-facing. Although, we will see what NOAA and NASA come out with later today after they've had a chance to model this, well, possible coronal mass ejection. We also see we have a coronal hole coming around the limb. And we have some sunspot groups that look fairly dangerous coming around the limb. And we'll take a look at those as well. Over to our D-Region Absorption Prediction Center. Move right into 1358. And that should be the peak of the flare there. You can see most of it occurred over the Atlantic Ocean and parts of Western Europe, Africa, South America and the Caribbean. Strongest flare we've seen in weeks. So even though we had a stereo C in orbit behind the sun in 2017 that NASA and NOAA claim was destroyed by coronal mass ejection, we still don't have a new satellite imaging the backside of the sun. We're dealing with composites. This is a composite. It's one and a half days old. 
And we can see that this is the Earth facing side of our solar disk. And this is again one and a half days old. So this is the sunspot group that we see coming around that looks awful complex. We have three sunspot groups. This one being very large, 002, 006 here, and 007 here. And you can see them here on the composite as well. Taking a look at our KP indexes, which is really a ground-based measurement of solar winds and plasma, we see that really we've seen no action whatsoever, especially on our estimated planetary KP index that NOAA and NASA have upgraded and exclusively used. So we've had a very quiet period that I assume is about to change based on the planetary positions and geomagnetic connections. Taking a look at our Discover satellite, it's about 150 miles above Earth, according to NOAA and NASA, and usually takes about 45 to 90 minutes for the data to reach Earth. We see that we have a couple of anomalies and some missing time. So first off, our shields are up, but when I started looking at the plasma here, well, I saw some really high anomalies like this 142 and another one to the left of that. And I saw additional ones, a 67, one above that I'm not going to be able to grab. Looks like we had some more anomalies here and higher than that. Uh, well over the 100 range. And we're going to verify this with an ACE satellite. Our ACE satellite's a little bit older, but shows the same anomalies. And then we have about an hour and a half of time missing out of the blue. Solar winds look like they started the day right here at about 475. And they're headed down currently, currently... They're at about 425. Plasma's been hanging out very low, around 2 to 4 centimeters cubed most all the day, except for these very high anomalies here, and of course the missing data. All right, over to ACE, real-time space weather satellite, our older space weather satellite. They pick up the exact same anomalies here to the T. So I think it's very, very strange. You can see they've added a hundred and a thousand here because they in fact did pick them up. They have the exact missing data as our Discover satellite. Very strange indeed. Here we do see a temperature spike where we didn't on Discover with the anomalies here lined up pretty well. Over to our Space Weather Prediction Center, also upgraded by NOAA with your tax dollars. Let's see what they were expecting today being the second. First, we'll look at plasma here. They were expecting plasma from about 2 to 3 centimeters cubed, so they did a great job. Minus the anomalies. And then solar winds on the second, well... They actually went from 475, which this says 500, down to 425. So they have it fairly close there as well, I will say. Now, usually when they have it fairly close, it's because they haven't updated it. And you can see it hasn't been updated in several days here. Huh. Taking a look at STO HMI magnetogram, you can see our two beta gamma sunspots ar4167 here ar4168 here and our simple sunspots as well taking a look at soho 284 angstroms you can see that coral hole we talked about coming around you can also see our two sunspot groups here and here that are beta gamma now 4167 and 4168 and we can also see that large sunspot group that's coming around the limb 
and should be named by tomorrow. All right, over to the planets today. It looks like someone's a little angry that we've been able to call out these larger earthquake dates. Uh, we can still barely see the geomagnetic connections. We have one to Pluto down here. You can barely see the pink haze, which is regularly much brighter. A geomagnetic connection to Neptune to Saturn. Uh, we have one to Eris to Cirrus and to Mercury currently. We do have a lot of geomagnetic connections, as you can see, and we have a lot of planetary lineups in the near-term future, but Earth is in a situation right now where we could be hit by large solar flares or earthquakes any day, although we can pick out some days based on the planetary positions and lineups. God bless, guys. Uh, we will go over those tonight on our live show. We're going to be going over all the volcanoes going off, all the earthquakes that have been occurring, and look at some of the possible dates in the near-term future that we might see upticks. Please share, subscribe, and always remember, anything's possible. Bizarro world. God bless you all.